Hello, in this video I'm going to show you the basic operations for filming with our lovely new Nikon D3300s. Now, if you're wanting to film with one of our new SLRs, uh, you can expect far greater image quality, uh, far more depth of field, but far more controls to learn. Fortunately, it's actually quite easy to set up these cameras so they're more or less point-and-shoot cameras. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is just how to turn them on. There's a little switch by your index finger. Switch that across to on, and the first thing you'll see on the back is a message. Before taking photos, rotate the zoom ring to extend the lens. This is the zoom, and at the moment it's locked. To unlock it, there's a little button on the side, and if you hold it in while you rotate, that will unlock the lens. It's now free to use. You don't have to use the button this time. The camera automatically goes into stills mode. These are stills cameras primarily, after all. So to get into video mode, just press the LV button, which should sit round about where your thumb is. If your lens cap is still on, make sure you take that off and put it somewhere safe. Now, you should be able to see what's through your lens, and in the top right-hand side of the viewfinder, you should see a little camera button with a 29M 59S minutes and seconds. Um, if you can't see that, just press the info button by your index finger and scroll through until you are able to see that. You're now completely in video mode. And there's only actually a few settings that I need to show you. This dial at the top selects what mode you're in. Now you can actually do pretty much anything in auto mode. So the green notch on the dial that says auto, uh, that's full automatic. What I need you to select is the one beneath that, where it has a kind of like a lightning flash symbol uh, with, a, with, a, with a score through it. Basically, that's going to stop the flash from popping up, so please select that one just beneath the auto. Next, to go into your settings, press the little I button in the bottom left-hand corner of the camera. Um, it'll only bring up three boxes, and there's only one you need to worry about. The first is quality, and I want you to just keep that at 72050p. The camera, as you will see, can shoot at a higher resolution than 720, but I want you to keep it at that because it's still fantastic quality, and it just means you're able to get more footage on the, um, on the cards. The next option is mic, and you're using the shotgun mics, which just plug in on the side. Once you've plugged it in, that's all you need to do. Make sure that mic is on auto, and the camera itself will take care of your levels for you. So if you're speaking quietly, it'll pick those up, and if you speak loudly, it'll lower them down. The third and most important box in this menu is your focus mode. Now there are three focusing modes, but I only need you to worry about the first two. Single servo AF and full servo AF. What are each of these and when do you use them? Well, that's quite simple actually. Full servo AF basically means the camera is always going to be trying to get the focus for you. It's no different to using a regular point and shoot camera. However, the downside to this is, with these cameras, it does struggle sometimes. You've got a far shallower depth of field, it can be a bit clumsy, it's not always great. Single servo autofocus, on the other hand, leaves all of the focusing to you. You can either choose to focus yourself with the focusing ring at the front, or if you hold down the shutter halfway, pointing at your subject, it will actually get the focus for you and then just leave it there. It won't be constantly trying to change the focus, it'll just stay there. So when should you use each of these options? I would argue that most of the time you'll be using single servo autofocus. If the subject in your shot doesn't move, be it a person like I'm being filmed right now, or an object, you can select the focus, be sure that it's not going to change, take your shot and then repeat. The only thing by doing this is ensuring that every single shot that you take you must remember to focus. There's nothing worse than getting back to the edit and finding blurry footage. The other option, full servo autofocus, is best used when you as the cameraman or the subject in your frame is moving, in which case there might need to be quite an awful lot of focusing going on within one shot. The best thing to do is to experiment with both of these options and try and get used to how they both work. So you're now ready to start shooting. To record, you simply press the uh, red record button which is by your index finger and press it again to stop recording. Once you start recording, you should see that that number in the top right hand corner starts going down. Um, don't worry that it says 29 minutes. That's only per shot, not the entire capacity of the card. You can probably fit a few, few hours worth of footage on these cards. Um, that's, that's just the maximum length one clip can be. Once you've finished shooting, you can review your footage by pressing the play button in the top left-hand corner of the camera. 
Press that one and you can scroll through with the D-pad, you can play footage, and most importantly, you can ditch any garbage. If there's footage that you don't need where you're accidentally shooting your feet, just press the trash button twice at the bottom and you will delete that footage. So there you go, that is as simple as these cameras get. Uh, you can pretty much get by making an entire movie with those functions. But if you feel pretty confident, if you're, you're used to these cameras by now, uh, don't be afraid to experiment with them. Play around with the options, see what you can uh, do, because you can't break them unless you drop them. Don't drop them. Hopefully that's been of some use to you. If you have any further questions, please just leave your comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.